Hello, my name is Ryan Skurlock and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Sensoron. In today's video, we're going to be demonstrating the standard setup procedure for setting up any Sensoron sensing device. For today's demonstration of the setup procedure, we have an RTS-125 Plus. It is an 8-channel system. Uh, we're going to review the different connections uh, on the exterior of the system that the user uh, needs to use in order to operate the system. So on the front panel of the system, we have the eight different channels. You see these eight green caps. This is channel one, channel two, channel three, and so on and so forth. Down here, we have an ethernet port, which is used for data streaming purposes to either connect the system to your personal laptop or to connect it to a local network. Down here is the power adapter slot that's used to power the system. And on the rear of the system, we have two additional ports. We have a USB slot as well as an HDMI slot. From the user's perspective, the system functions as a Windows PC. You can plug in a mouse, a keyboard, and connect an external monitor and operate the system as a, as a Windows PC. So I have all the components uh, required to connect a sensor to the system uh, laid out in front of me. I've already gone through with this uh, clicker cleaner and thoroughly cleaned all the different connections of the various components that I'll be using. Uh, cleaning all the various optical components is uh, something that needs to be done periodically to maintain optimal performance of the system. So for the configuration I'll be using is to uh, directly connect the system via Ethernet to uh, an external PC. Any Windows PC will work. So the first step is to plug in this Ethernet cable to the front panel of the system. Clicks right in. And the other end, of course, is directly connected to your personal laptop. The second step is to plug in the power adapter. So for the RTS-125 Plus, uh, the power adapter, uh, this is the power adapter and the power slot is right here. You want to be mindful that it, it does have a rotational orientation, which you'll have to properly align in order to properly secure the connector. So be mindful of that. Once you have it properly aligned, you can fully screw in the power, the, uh, the power cord once it's fully engaged, the system will power on. So for the demonstration, I have this carbon fiber beam, which I'll be using uh, to demonstrate how to set up a sensor. And the first step is to select which channel you'll be uh, connecting to. This is channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, and so on and so forth. Using an FC APC patch cord, I will connect into channel 2. And again, when making this connection, just be very mindful of where the tip of this connector is at. We don't want to unnecessarily brush that up against anything, which can easily dirty the connector. So as you're making this connection, just be careful that you're inserting the, the ferrule of the connector without, uh, without making it dirty. Uh, this connector also has a rotational alignment with the mating connector on the front of the, front of the system. There is a, a small key that needs to be properly aligned. Once you have that aligned, you can fully engage and screw in the patch cord. So this is approximately 10 meters long, this, this patch cord here, but depending on what system you're using, um, the, the length of this initial patch cord is arbitrary. And the purpose of this first patch cord is to serve as a standoff from the system to where you're actually making an installation. So you can build in plenty of standoff length to where you can offset the, inter or the system sufficiently away from your installation. The RTS-125 Plus, this length can be up to 30 meters and anywhere in between. I will now make the second connection, which is to this broadband reflector. You'll have one of these per channel, and what this does is it tells the system where to begin your sensing length. So you have this initial dead length, which is used for standoff, and then your actual sensing length, where you're going to be installing fiber, will occur 3 meters downstream of this box. And you also be mindful that there is a proper orientation to this broadband reflector. Uh, you'll pay attention to the labels uh, on each side of the reflector and orient it properly or else uh, the system won't function properly. Be mindful of that. Again, just being care carefully making this connection such that you're not dirtying the connectors. If you do happen to dirty the connector or you think you might have, just go ahead and go back in and clean it again with, say, this clicker cleaner. So now I've connected the broadband reflector to the front panel of the system. 
and I, I alluded to it earlier that the actual sensing length will begin three meters downstream of this broadband reflector. So for this carbon fiber beam sensor, I've actually built in that required three meters of sensing or of dead length uh, into the sensor itself. So I've spliced it directly to the sensing fiber. So I can go ahead and take this now and plug it into the downstream end of the broadband reflector or BBR. As long as I've properly connected all these, uh, I've, 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 as long as I've properly made all these connections and I've built in the required three meters of standoff length, I will be ready to acquire data from this sensor. So that's one way to set up the system. An alternative, an alternative method is for those of you that are interested in more of a modular installation, you don't have to build in the required three meters of dead length into the sensor itself. You can also build a shorter length of cable into the sensor and then you can use an FC APC mating connector in order to build in the required three meters of dead length. So I'll demonstrate that here. Again, you'll want to make sure that these connectors are fully engaged after you uh, properly rotate the, or get the uh, proper rotational alignment, you want to make sure they're fully engaged. That can be a source of why your output isn't looking as expected. So again, this is for more of a modular installation where I can build in this main connector uh, in line with my sensor. And that's just an alternative method to setting up a sensor. Now that I have this all set up, I'm ready to start acquiring data and run my test.